Lightning like Steve McQueen. I'm not fast lane when the light turns green. I'm not built tough, I ain't nothing but grit. Cause I made rugged blood, sweat, and spit. Yeah, like a horse I fly. Then I push yourself in for a bumpy ride. I like to play hard, but I work harder. And I weather the storm cause I'm built stronger. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back. We are live. It is a Freight Coach Morning Show, the top morning show in transportation coming to you guys every single weekday, 8.30 in Pacific, 10.30 Central to break down some industry headlines and most importantly, provide some actual insight into what you can do with all of this information. If this is your first time tuning in, welcome. This is the real side of freight, ladies and gentlemen. And what do I mean by that? I mean, I only speak to transportation professionals on this show as well as my twice a week long form podcast because I want to put the right information out there from the people who have done what you're looking to do or who are currently doing what you're trying to achieve. So you can take that, apply it, utilize it, and see a meaningful difference in your business and your life. It's one of the many, many reasons why I proudly fly this American flag behind me every single day. A, we're the greatest nation on earth, but B, I'm living my American dream, and I want to help each and every one of you live yours as well. Um, I got a very special guest for you guys. Uh, we're going to talk about some stuff that is going on in the news and the finance world and everything because that's why I continuously bring him on. Um, a, he's a lot smarter than me in so many ways, and he just he knows this game. And there's just some news that's coming out there about some uh, current things that are going on. There's a lot of uh, equipment that is about to hit to hit the market, so I figured I might as well bring a guy on here who knows what he's talking about to break down some potential options for you guys. And but before we do any of that, you guys um, gotta give a shout out to my friends over at V Hub. You know, vhubapp.com. You guys all like making money. I like making money. And that's what you get with vhub is you can jump on their platform. You guys, you can reserve some trailers and you get paid to move those trailers. Um, and that's on top of the revenue that you can get by loading those trailers out. So here's what they're working on right now, you guys, is they have some trailers out in San, or this, this one is in San Bernardino, California, needing to go to Columbus, Ohio. It's 53 foot swing door drive ins. You get paid 990 US to move that. They also have some uh, trailers going to, um, excuse me, San Diego going to Maquoquita, Iowa is where it's going. You guys, you get 1800 US to move those, you guys. And those are 48 foot roll up doors. And then they also have uh, um, San, I can't pronounce it, San Ysidro, California going to Front Royal, Virginia. Uh, 48 foot roll up vans as well on that. And those pay 1800 per trailer. So hit them up. You guys, vhubapp.com. My man, uh, Zach Lonergan and Stacey Steen, they'll be in the audience. Just do me a favor and let them know that the freight coach sent you April Maroney. Good morning to you. Win that freight Wednesday. We got some freight moving right now, April and my good friends over at green screens helped me, uh, supply the rates on that. I use them to literally quote everything. We just had a driver get loaded up with a shipment that I won using their platform. So you guys, greenscreens.ai slash the freight coach, hit them up. You guys, I'm using them every day. Every load I'm moving is because of the rates that I get from green screen. Sunny Sharma, good Wednesday morning. Let's all have a great day. Let's get it, my man. Tracy St. Clair over on YouTube. Let's go. Carol Curtin, happy Wednesday. Good morning. Sydney Thiessen, good morning to you. Thanks for tuning in. Papa Freight, Stephen Title is in the house. Time for the real news, he says. That's right. All right. I'm going to bring my man on here. We make things happen every single day. James is out on the road. He's in a Starbucks right now making this happen. James is Good morning, Mr. Jolly. Mr. Jolly, so it's so a formal. I don't know if I've ever heard that. All I can hear is he's, he's at a coffee shop right now. You got to do what you got to do, man. This is uh, all about freight, and I like being on the road. That's so. You're in a Starbucks right now. Where where at? Where are you? You're in, somewhere in Canada. I, I am in Canada. I'm just outside of uh, Montreal, Quebec, Canada. I love it. I love it, man. So, dude, what's what's going on? What's going on out in your world, man? There's a lot of stuff that's happening in the, the finance world right now. And how's everything going on here? It's been a couple of weeks, and you know, a lot of these articles pop up, and I'm like, James, I got to get you back on the show. You know what? It's uh, it, it's it's always interesting. That that's the thing that I love about freight is there's never a dull day, there's never a dull moment, and it really depends on who you're talking to uh, when it comes down to how everything is going. Uh, you know, we talk to lots of folks every day who are uh, you know riding uh, the wave that they started two or three years ago, 
and we talk to lots of folks every day who need a hand through some more difficult situations. So we really have to be agile and uh, think on our toes a lot of the day. And uh, it keeps us fresh and it keeps everything exciting. Um, the, what it comes down to is that, you know, we like helping folks through uh, difficult times and, and it keeps them coming to us through the good times. I agree, man. I think that um, for, for me personally, right now is a, it's such a great opportunity to really set yourself apart in, in any market. And I think that for, for me personally, like I was talking to somebody yesterday um, and we were, you know, we were talking about like the training aspect of stuff and, and, and that's going to be on a podcast here coming up. Uh, in a couple of weeks. So I don't want to divulge too much, but it's like, they're taking that approach as well as it's just like, Hey, we, we want to help elevate people's companies. Right? Like, cause there's so much that we all don't know about really anything. Right. And I think that the sooner that you admit that and you, and you pair up with uh, a subject matter expert in those spaces, that's when you start to make strides. Right. And I, I think that right now is the perfect time because we're, we are getting closer to things turning around then I think a lot of people realize or want to realize, right? And, you know, the market's going to improve. It's inevitable market shifts. There's ups and there's downs. But I think like, you know, as we've been talking about, um, well, at least the last couple of times that you've been on, man, is it's like we're closer to things uh, recovering now than not. So it's like, what are we going to do? We There's growth in any market. Not that you'll ever get, you know, three or four economists who ever agree with each other, but from everything I'm reading, uh, it looks like somewhere around the end of Q4 into potentially Q1, Q2, 2024 is when things start to really turn around. Um, it's understandable after a few years of people buying products online that they went back to more service oriented spending. And so people are taking trips this year like they weren't two years ago and when you're taking trips there's not a whole lot of freight demand that comes with that so the the general spending is different than what we've seen over the past few years everything we're going through now was anticipated and expected this is not unusual um you know we just have to figure out how to ride a little bit of a bump uh before it gets good again yeah, and I personally think that the bump is already damn near almost in the rearview mirror at this point. And I think that, you know, what, what we're doing now, how we're establishing ourselves now is like when you operate this way, even when it's in an up market, that's when the greatest strides are, are really made in business, right? And I think that if you're, you know, like, again, you're, you're trudging through right now, you're making it work. It's that grit, that mentality is what's going to like really push you to to that next level. Um, so let's get into the first article here, and we're we're going to talk about this: the rates lagging. What is the forecast going to be into twenty twenty four? And I've been talking about this on a lot of stuff, and the, this article stuck out a lot to me, James, because last you know last time we were talking, you were like, "Hey, a lot of kind of what goes in or a contributing factor is what's your contracted freight look like? What's that freight market looking like?" how is like and how that plays into who you're working with so this article is from fleetowner.com and it says as rates still lag trucking forecast is cloudy going into 2024 and i bring up multiple media sources on this you guys because i want you to see everybody's perspective i'm not just talking one news sources articles i break down all of these because i want to have everybody here everyone's perspective on where things are going because i think that's going to help you make a better decision um, prevailing sentiment earlier this year said that trucking was headed towards a recession like the rest of the U.S. economy. Though opinion has shifted against even a mild downturn nationwide as interest rates have come under control, freight hauling itself still has challenges heading into 2024 with flat rates, deflated capacity, um, demand that is still stubbornly down, and suddenly reinflated fuel prices, um, as several new reports show and industry analysts say. Two trucking uh, data aggregators, ACT Research and FTR Transportation Intelligence, led the way with recent outlooks that are decidedly mixed, um, with FTR slightly more pessimistic. A red flag for FTR and a third industry data firm, DAT, remains slumping spot market with rates on DAT's load board, DAT1, um, 
trending as much as 11% lower than in 2022. Data from another load board um, from FTR watches and partners with uh, reports truck stop uh, yield similarly shabby results. Yet one more barometer, the latest tonnage report from the uh, Trucking Federation, AT, American Trucking Association, dipped 3% in July compared to July of 2022, the fifth consecutive year-over-year -year decline in the ATA measure as a sign that the freight market remains soft. The measure slid 0.8% in July after falling 0.3% in June, uh, according to the ATA, which calculates tonnage based on uh, surveys from its membership that has been uh, doing so since uh, the 1970s. And it goes on to say headwinds from our uh, fourth freight remained in July, pushing the truck tonnage index lower. Uh, and then uh, that came from Bob Costello with ATA. Um, as has been the case for several months, a multitude of factors have caused a recession in freight, including sluggish spending on goods by household uh, as consumers traveled more and went to concerts this summer, less home constructions falling factory output and shippers consolidating freight into fewer shipments compared with frenzies during the goods buying spree at the height of the pandemic and uh, the significant drags on tonnage. So kind of hearing a lot of that stuff, James, like where's where's your head at? Like how, if somebody came, like you knowing that information and someone's coming in and talking to you, like what's like, how do you kind of steer that conversation? Well, I mean, the first thing that I tell people is uh, stop turning your wheels for less than what it costs you to turn them. And the reality is, uh, is if it costs you 225 a mile, and you're only getting 205 a mile, um, it's you know maybe not in your best interest to run that load. The reality of what it all boils down to, and I I, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, uh, and uh, you know it, it's difficult to hear, but until people stop doing loads at 205, those rates are going to stay exactly where they are. Forgot to take myself off mute. <laughs> We're trying our best to work. See, James is such a fan of coffee with the Frey Coach. He needed to go to a coffee shop for this one just to kind of go along with the brand. Um, but no, man, I mean, that's a it it's it, it's very valuable to hear a lot of this stuff too. And 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 I'm just noticing this again inside of my own brokerage. I'm seeing things start to shift in the market. I'm seeing more opportunities become more readily available with that. And then I was talking to another friend of mine who owns a truck, you know, he's got, I don't know, well over 20 trucks in his fleet and a brokerage as well. And he was even saying that he's like, dude, the spot market for some of my drivers rates are starting to increase a lot out on that Avenue. So again, like there's, there's, it, it's, we can look at data and I'm not ever discrediting data, but when you're talking to the individuals who are active in the day to day, it brings a different level of information because it's more real time, right? It's not, it's, Hey, this is what I'm going through every single day. And I think like, as you're going out there and looking to expand your fleet or look at different financing options, like have this stuff put together, like how useful for you, James, would it be if somebody came in with their, you know, maybe their projections, maybe some reports from their bookkeepers, some awarded freight, stuff like that. And then they're talking to you about, Hey, this is what I have going on. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, contracts and pro projections are of the utmost importance in our world. It really helps us try and predict what that particular client is going to do year over year. Uh, unfortunately, nobody really has a 100% contract in the LTL world. Uh, it just doesn't work that way. So what we base a lot of our predictions on is history. Uh, and what the company has done through times like these and in up times, we're looking at, you know, the, the value of the contracts, uh, the, the amount of loads that they were doing on LTL and the spot freight market. Um, it all matters in, in the long run. And we try and keep that in perspective um, year over year when we're doing financing for a lot of these guys. Yeah. And I think uh, back into the article here, it said, you know, they're talking about based on their assessment four higher trucking companies have already faced the longest period of consistently unfavorable market conditions since the great recession. And that was from Avery vice, uh, the FTR's VP of trucking. We expect the negative readings to continue for nearly a year or 
a, a year longer and little, if any, improvement until early 2024. As we have noted before, the challenges are not uniform as the current market is hitting small carriers much harder than larger ones, especially considering the recent upturn in diesel prices. And diesel is up again for like an 88th consecutive week. Yes, that's over exaggerated, but it's up to 447 or 449 a gallon nationwide out there. Um, and then I think that, you know, it's the same thing for the spot market and what people are seeing out there. And again, I think that now more than ever is one of those times to really get out there and establish yourself with a consistent shipper or a consistent broker. Go, you know, it says in this article as we're kind of wrapping this one up that owner operators consistently complain about spot rates, it, <clears throat> excuse me, at least for drive in, and how they still float barely above $2 per mile. Um, and with that, that or the right van rates on that one was 207, while reefer rates were 245. And flatbed was at 251, and then DAT report uh, a, a DAT reports attribute some of the uh, slump to a typical summer freight cycle. But spot rates have been this low uh, or lower for most of 2023. And then um, FTR did see spot rates in uh, truck stop system rise for the first time in 10 weeks that were going out there. And uh, Ken Adamo from DAT uh, to uh, summarize this article said spot rates as a remainder are all in rates, meaning no separate fuel surcharge to help mitigate the risk of the fuel price fluctuations. You have to negotiate each individual load with fuel and operating costs in mind, which is not always easy. The sudden increase in fuel prices is testing the wherewithal of small carriers out there. And, you know, James, as you were saying, you know, it's, it's knowing what those break even points are. And I think like, you know, there's technology out there now, too, that helps you plan better on your route too. like pulling up where, you know, if you're running from you know, Pennsylvania down to Texas, mapping out your route, where does it have the most effective fuel prices? And I think right now, especially with the nationwide being 449 a gallon, an extra five, you know, five, 10 cents a gallon savings is going to go a long way for you right now. Absolutely. And, and, you know, one of the things that we try and uh, really push in our world is the use of more technology in uh, the day-to-day -day operations of trucking companies. Uh, most of the mid and, and large size carriers have the ability to price in those technological advances to their daily operations. Whereas the, uh, you know, the smaller carriers and the owner operators don't have those same advantages because predominantly what they're running on is that spot market load rate and they don't have the, the time and energy and resources and, and finances really to have those same advantages. So, um, you know, when they do get to that size where they, the company is growing, it is one of the things that we are pushing for is uh, more use of uh, GPS and, and technology like that that can help you plan your load and um, plan your way back as well. You know, every, every truck and trailer that goes out eventually has to come back. And, you know, to, using an app like VHub can help you plan that way back as well. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it, you know I'm glad you brought that up because I had uh, um, just had a conversation. I just interviewed a guy who does uh, chassis leasing as well. And, you know, I actually met him through JD. Um, and, you know, we were talking about that. And, you know, that's the same thing as it's just like right now, especially utilizing that platform alone to get you that, you know, cause if you're a smaller carrier, for example, and you know how to, you know, have experience with a drop trailer pool, you might only have a couple of trailers utilizing something like V hub does get you on the map. That does change your sales conversation with your customers and your prospects about your ability to do a drop trailer pool. Cause I mean, dude, there was, um, I mean, the other day, like I was talking on the show on the list that they sent, there's a bunch of rental trailers that are out there right now for very favorable rates. So it's like, Thinking outside the box right now is going to help you in so many more ways about how do you get out there in, in the market to kind of separate yourself and, and look at different ways to, to really add value in there, to get that dedicated freight, to get that consistent business. Because that all comes full turn when you're looking at your business from, I hate this corporate term, but that 10,000 foot view. But when you're looking at that and then you can bring it in there because you're looking to expand your business and grow your business out. That's how you handle these things. Absolutely, and, and fantastic segue into the next article, uh, talking about favorable rates and the amount of equipment that is being sold off in the market 
simply due to Yellow's uh, failure. Um, that all of that equipment is about to hit the market, and thankfully, uh, you know, the, the companies responsible for liquidating those assets are. It sounds like they're going to be smart about it and not flood the market. But you should be able to get some favorable rates with some of that equipment as well, which would inevitably help uh, a lot of those owner operators. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you, man. And uh, just to summarize, that our previous article was from FleetOwner.com, um, and all the articles that we are going to uh, be breaking down, um, we I put those links up to the articles on my YouTube channel as well as the Coffee with the Freight Coach uh, audio only replay up there. And um, all right, so that next article that we are going to be breaking down, you guys. Oh, I got some shout outs. Sorry, guys. We've been James and I have been going on this conversation. We got to Kyle Provost. What's going on, brother? Luke Wright, good morning to you. Corey Buchan, good morning. Henrik, good morning to you. Jamie Parker, happy hump day. De uh, Devon McKinney, good morning to you. Trey Lincoln over on YouTube, what's going on? Thomas Weeder, and hope you're all having a freight day. Erica Hamilton, Orange Shirt Gang, and uh, Stephen Thompson, happy Wednesday, y'all. Um, all right, so yeah, that's the the, mar the article we're going to segue into here is from ttnews.com. Uh, used truck market can likely handle uh, the yellow liquidation. Appetite is there's uh, uh, is Jesus. I'm <laughs> Appetite is there as pandemic equipment holes remain, experts say. Used trucks and trailers owned by yellow are set to come up for auction in unprecedented numbers, but the market can handle it, says observers. A liquidation of this size has not been seen for decades, says Stacy Tracy, the president of auctioneers Taylor and Martin. Um, adding that it was by far the biggest scale by value in the history of the trucking industry. Uh, still, uh, said Tracy, the market has the appetite to consume this type of volume. Uh, part of it is because of the methodical approach from administrators of the LTL company's liquidation, says Stephen Tam, an ACT Research Vice President. Uh, he goes on to say, if the administrators were to dump all of that on the market tomorrow, it would be a challenge for the industry to deal with. But um, they are striving very ardently to maximize the proceeds. The administrators are going with a steady approach and not looking to flood the market. Um, also, the freight industry has un uh, undergone equipment shortages in recent years, and the yellow trucks and trailers are all coming down to the market, are not going to fill all the holes. Um, yellow owned around 12,000 tractors and 42,000 trailers at the end of the quarter um, of 2023. In April of 2022, though, Yellow said it had replaced nearly a third of its older over-the-road long-haul trucking fleet, which it called the backbone of its delivery operations, and Yellow bought 1,400 new Volvo VRN tractors in 21 and 22. And then a year old, earlier, Yellow inked what Packer Inc. said was the single largest order of Peterbilt trucks ever, uh, buying 1,200 models of those. And then Yellow paid for the fresh rolling uh, stock with $400 million dollars of the controversial $700 million loan, which we will not talk about because that is not the topic of this article. And the infusion of newer models um, of the vehicles is set to benefit the sale. But like many of the LTL fleet, there's still a sizable percentage of much older trucks in the fleet, observer say. And then there's a barbell of younger trucks in Yellow's fleet and also a barbell of much older trucks in the fleet. So like, how do, how do you balance that stuff, right? Like, because I, I would assume that financing for an older used truck is probably not going to be the most appealing for somebody like you, right? Like you're going to want to see the people going after those brand new uh, trucks that they had had in their fleet, which I didn't see that they had even said that they had received yet. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Uh, you know, financing uh, older used equipment is never ideal. There's, uh, there's a lot of risk behind it, uh, particularly once uh, some of these day cabs get over, uh, five, 600,000 miles, uh, it is very challenging. That being said, there's a lender out there for everything. So uh, I'm not overly concerned if, if at some point uh, there's a massive liquidation of some of those older, older models. Uh, I'm confident that they'll be accepted by somebody on the market. Um, you know, what, it, what I think is important to remember, Chris, is that uh, Yellow was a massive company, top 10 certainly in the U.S., um, and most of their equipment was moving all of the time. So I imagine that even though Yellow has failed as a company, that equipment will be uh, reintegrated within the freight market in North America and, and reutilized somewhere else. 
So what would you think? Like, because obviously they have a, a rollout plan here. They're they're obviously not going to flood that market because that would probably throw a wrench into a lot of things. So how like what looks like a successful rollout from your perspective? If you were to see that, if them is it like dumping the capacity? That sounds bad, but like is it like putting the the trucks into different markets as a whole, or is it going to be like an online bidding auction or? Do you, do you think from your perspective, do you think that there's going to be somebody out there who's going to go on and be like, I want to buy 5,000 of these trucks? Well, um, I, I think if if you're coming from the perspective of the um, the, the auctioneer or the liquidator, um, the, the ideal circumstance is that you spread that out geographically, um, giving uh, having to give a discount for a purchase of 5,000 would inevitably cut into their profit margin and the margin that yellow is looking to get out for its creditors. So I think uh, what we'll probably see is a slow integration of that equipment into auction sites online with the ability to spread it out geographically as much as possible in order to maximize their profit or, yeah, or at least their break even. Okay. Yeah. Cause it, it was saying here in the article that uh, um, most of them, most of the trucks are day cabs, which works in favor of the bankruptcy administrator because the demand is fairly strong for that. And there's ample supply of sleeper cabs at that moment. So like from a price perspective though, cause it comes on to say that class eight trucks are down 30 to 35% from 12 years, uh, 12, you know, 12 months ago, the average used truck retail uh, sale price was $68,000 in June, down 26% and 1% lower uh, month on, on a month over month basis. And then truck prices had to come back down to reality um, as a whole. And then the average sale uh, price for, let me see, the average sale price of a class A truck is around $50,000 with retail market values as a great deal higher than that. The average wholesale price is between 40 and 45,000 with the average auction price of twenty five to thirty five thousand dollars. So, do you think like is that what it's going to be? Is where someone's going to come in and be like, "Hey, I want to buy all this stuff at a wholesale price because I'm going to go in there and do that." And but or is it going to raise the market though as a whole because they're saying that day cabs are, kind, I don't want to say in demand, but like it there's not ample supply like there is of sleeper cabs and with most of that equipment being a day cab. How do you think that rolls out? Well, it, it, an increased supply on the market certainly won't cause an increase in the overall cost of day cabs. I think it's important here that uh, the price of day cabs has come down in single digits, whereas the price of sleeper cabs has come down, I think you said 30%. There's, there's a significant difference there. Um, so what I would imagine is going to happen is those day cabs will hit the market uh, prices will probably remain consistent uh, until that uh, quant the, the quantity of yellow tractors has integrated within the market. So you don't think there's going to, because like, I, I think that you could almost see somebody, James, like raising the price preemptively when they see when this stuff is going to roll out and be like, all right, I want to get, I want to, because the demand's going to be there, right? The demand is there, but if you're that auctioneer, clearly there's a massive difference between an auction price and a retail price. If you're that auctioneer, you want to maximize your profit. Selling off 5,000 at a time doesn't exactly do that. So there are probably some stipulations in there where there's a maximum number of tractors and trailers that uh, you can buy at one time or you can liquidate at one time. Yeah. It, it, that being I think said, I, I have no inside track on anything that's going on there. So yeah. we should put that caveat yeah. in. I caveat. have no idea. Massive caveat. I have no neither, idea. <laughs> neither of us have any clue about what is going on with this. This is purely speculation. Um, as you guys all know, there's no none of that going on. But James, as I always, I man, these times just always fly by with you jumping on the show. And I, I appreciate you breaking this stuff down. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see you guys. I think anything's possible with this liquidation. I still think that there's a chance that somebody could go in and the, probably buy up the majority of this stuff before it even gets to market. I could see somebody with deep enough pockets buying their newer equipment, and then they'll just end up liquidating some of the older models. But I appreciate your time, James. How, how does anybody reach out to you and uh, to get in contact? 
uh, find me on LinkedIn or uh, james.courier at finlock.com. Always happy to chat with any of your listeners. Perfect. I appreciate it, man. And that's going to be it for today, you guys. Um, I got a guest coming on tomorrow as well. But as always, if you guys got value in what you heard here, subscribe and share the show, you guys. Rank the show. Get it out there to your network because if you see value, your network's going to see value in it as well. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. And we'll be talking to you soon.